I have done several videos that highlight the diversity of the white oak group. And today I'm going to focus on another awesome white oak, a species that gets its common name from the shape of its leaves, has distinctively ridged bark, and produces large dark acorns. This is the incredible chestnut oak, Quercus Montana, which is mainly found in the mountains and hills from New England down through Alabama and Mississippi, where it grows in fast draining soils on slopes and ridges. It is a large oak and normally matures from 50 to 70 feet in height with an equal spread, but may grow larger in some situations. Chestnut oak usually has a single trunk and a crown that will vary from open and spreading when growing in open conditions to a much narrower crown when growing with close competition from other trees. If you love learning about eastern oaks, like the awesome chestnut oak, then pretend that like button is a ripe chestnut oak acorn and bury it like a squirrel. The leaves are four to nine inches long and two and a half to four inches wide with the widest point being towards the tip. The leaf margin or edge is coarsely toothed with wide, blunt, rounded teeth, sometimes appearing scalloped with 10 or more teeth per side, somewhat resembling the leaves of the American chestnut, the origin of this oak's common name. The base of the leaf tapers to a rounded point, which often has an unequal width of leaf tissue on each side of the mid vein. The upper leaf surface is dark green and the lower leaf surface paler with tufts of long hairs along the mid vein and veins and much shorter hairs on the leaf blade. Fall color is various shades of brown, yellow, and red. The bark is dark gray to nearly black and divided by deep wide furrows into broad ridges that have a triangular cross section. The acorns are large, one to one and a half inches long, somewhat oval in shape, and have a cap that covers one third to half of the nut. Caps have gray scales that are tipped with red when young. The acorns ripen to a chestnut brown in the fall and drop from September to November and are soon sought out by wildlife. Acorns of species in the white oak group are an important food source for a variety of mammals, including deer, black bears, and squirrels. Acorns of species in the white oak group are generally lower in bitter tannins than those of oaks in the red oak group, which makes them more palatable to wildlife. If you know how tannins got their name, let me know down in the comments. Many species of birds also feast upon white oak acorns, especially wild turkeys, woodpeckers, jays, and waterfowl. The foliage of young white oak sprouts is a preferred forage of deer, and white oak leaves of all ages are eaten by over 400 species of caterpillars. Doug Talame brought the importance of our native oaks to insects, birds, and other wildlife to the public in his excellent book, The Nature of Oaks, which should be on every backyard ecologist reading list. You can find a link to this must read book on the backyard ecology recommendations page, which I will link in the description. The key features to identify chestnut oak are the distinctive furrows and triangle shaped ridges on the bark and the toothed leaves with long hairs along the mid ribbon veins and shorter hairs on the blade of the lower leaf and its habit of growing on dry, fast draining slopes. There are several white oaks with similarly shaped leaves that may be confused with chestnut oak. These include swamp white oak Quercus bicolor, swamp chestnut oak Quercus mishoyi, and chinkapin oak Quercus muhlenbergii. Swamp white oak has similarly darkish colored bark, but the bark of the swamp white oak flakes and scales unlike that of the chestnut oak. The swamp chestnut oak has light gray to whitish bark that flakes and scales and is quite different when compared to the darker gray to black, prominently triangular ridged, non-flaking bark of the chestnut oak. Chinkapin oak also has light gray to whitish, flaking, scaling bark. Chestnut oak is used as a shade tree in large yards, parks, and other areas with enough space for them to grow. Its wood is used for fence posts, to make cross ties, and tannin was extracted from chestnut oak bark for use in the processing of leather in earlier times. The caterpillars of the introduced and invasive spongy moth have a taste for chestnut oak foliage and have been known to totally defoliate them. The chestnut oak has very distinctive bark and is an indicator of dry, fast draining soils, but it is not the only member of the white oak group that prefers drier growing conditions, and it can often be found growing with another white oak known for its distinctive cross-shaped leaves, the post oak, Quercus stellata, which you can learn all about in this video, and be sure to take some time and enjoy nature in your backyard.